Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You are listening to Society Bites Radio. My name is Jillian Beth. I am an intuitive healer and coach on a mission to empower women by reconnecting them to their inner wisdom. And I'm so grateful to have you here with us today and to have the amazing Dr. Nikki back. Now, if you missed last week's show, you definitely want to go check it out. We had a really fun and powerful conversation about turning your passion into into profit. And she's back again this week to talk about her business advice for women from a woman because she has been doing some really badass things in business. Now, a little bit about Miss Nikki. Um, Dr. Nikki Samet is a psychologist. She's a women's business and life coach, social influencer, and writer. She has a master's degree in leadership development and a PhD in clinical psychology. She specializes in working with female entrepreneurs by empowering them to identify their passions and turn them into profit. She works heavily on mindset, mindfulness, and authenticity training. Dr. Nikki is also a yoga teacher and transcendental meditation practitioner. She lives in San Diego with her husband, Jared, her amazing dog, Pax, and her little baby on the way. Her professional background includes recruiting, sales, coaching, brand strategy, social media, and leadership development. She has led teacher training programs, workshops, and loves building community with other badass women. So welcome back, Mm. Nikki. Oh, it's so good to be back. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, I got to get used to calling you Dr. Nikki because you have definitely earned that. You know, I have to get used to it too. And that's actually (laughs) something that I work with women on is owning their title. So whether that's CEO, you know, or that's doctor, whatever it is. And and it's just an interesting thing is like, I also realized myself is that I wasn't giving myself enough credit for the hard work that I had done. And that's actually what spurred that the mindset challenge that I had through October was needing to acknowledge where I was at and the things that I had done and rewiring my mindset. So thank you for your acknowledgement. Yeah. Um, I, I'll put it in my mind piggy bank that um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to call myself it all day. Yes. Dr. Nikki, Dr. Nikki, truly. And, and normally I would have you give a little bit about your backstory, but I'm not going to do that this time because you gave it on last week's show. And if anybody didn't hear it, I really invite you to go back and listen. It was an awesome conversation where she talked about you know, how she's really evolved to turning her passion into profit. So what I would like to jump into on this one is if you could go back, so we're rewinding a little bit, what advice would you give to yourself starting out on this journey of turning your passion into profit? You can't mess up. Yes. You can't mess up that even you know, all the days that I was like, oh, I can't put this out there. What are people going to judge me? Oh, I can't launch that. I can't do this. What are people going to think? Um, you, you can't mess up at ever, you know, because every single time that you, you choose to put yourself out there is momentum, mm-hmm. whether that is received well or not. And I was talking to another female founder just recently on my podcast, and she talk to me about pivoting and market research and saying that you don't know what's out there unless you do your market research and you, you try, you just try. And if things don't pan out and the feedback you get is not exactly what you were hoping for, you just pivot. So my advice to myself, I can literally see these moments in my head, by the way, as we're saying Mm -hmm. this, I'm like, Oh, you would have been fine there. You would have been fine there (laughs) is, um, is that you can't mess up. So just do it. Yeah, so good. We we touched on that a little bit on the last show too, where it's like you can't you can't really get it wrong because mm-hmm. looking back, you can see how the dots connect even more so. And um, I remember one of the the coaches that I worked with said very much the same thing. It's like put it out there, put it out there. You got to test the market and fail fast. Mm-hmm. You know, as fast as you can, because the people that are the most successful, they have failed the most times. Oh yeah. But it's about how many times you get back up, right? Yep. 
So, and we also don't see that either, right? So we we hear the stories, but what we see is their successes. Mm. And so we then identify that they're successful and I'm not, when in reality, they went through all of the yeah. same things. I mean, literally from day one, they have experienced the same thoughts and failures as all of us are. So it's just, I think that's media and social media and, and just how we perceive things, but Absolutely. I know that's a, whole, that's a whole other topic. No, but it, it's definitely worthwhile, you know, mentioning because we see the successes a lot more than we see the failures. And, and some people I think are more open, especially if they have workshops or coaching uh, around, you know, going through that and, and really building a business. But it, it's just like, you know, the Instagram picture pops to mind where how many pictures do they take and how many filters do they add on to get that perfect one that they put out that everybody judges themselves against. Yep. It's uh, so true. I mean, I take a, I take photos all the time for my own page and I can literally look through my phone today and be honest and say, there's 20 shots before I put the pick the best one. And then I did, I did change lighting because I wanted to look brighter. I wanted to look, you know, warmer. And so that's, that's what we see. And then with just in terms of my research that I've done on how social media impacts uh, millennial women, what then the brain picks up is these images at over and over and over again. And that's what becomes imprinted into our mind of this is what is normal. This is what is society is telling me I have to be and do. And so it becomes a norm at that mm-hmm. point. So true. So incredibly true. So I, I want to shift gears just slightly because one of the things that, you know, I've, I've always admired about you is you continue to find different ways to work on yourself. And because I, I know that personal and business life is deeply integrated, the more we can reflect on ourselves and be aware of what things come up, the more it also helps our business life. So I'm wondering if you could share with the listeners what are some of your, I like to call them fail safes or the things that you know you can turn to that will work for you or help you in those times when maybe things aren't going exactly as expected? It's actually a really easy answer, um, simple easy answer. Uh, yeah, it's simple answer, but it's actually, it can be challenging to do. So I know that sounds a little confusing, but The one thing that you can do or that I do when I'm feeling blah, 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 or Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of struggling or I lean back into is authenticity, which means Mm -hmm. being yourself always. So whether that is sharing through um, to your community what you're currently experiencing um, through social media posts or blog posts or with listeners or however you're doing that is coming from a place that is um, just honest and real. Um, I have found that every time that I am just myself and that I communicate, um, I'm always, I always land back on my feet. It's when I'm hiding from that person, I try to be somebody else. I try to do things like somebody else is when I really find myself in a more anxious turmoil state. Um, So it's, it's about being you. That's it. And You know, people ask me, how do I grow my Instagram account or how do I get clients? How do I, you know, create an email list, all this stuff. And it comes back to one thing. It's just be yourself, Mm -hmm. be yourself, be yourself, be yourself. Mm, So good. And definitely easier than said sometimes. I can (laughs) appreciate why you brought that up. Um, So the other thing that I'm, I'm really curious about is, do you have any rituals or spiritual practices or, or things that you do that put you in the good, um, place mentally, physically that allows you to really move forward with everything that you have going on in your life? I try. Um, I, I definitely try. I meditate every single day. I am a transcendental meditation practitioner. I would learn to meditate when I was 10, um, cause both my parents were meditators, but I did not, commit to meditation 
Um, I dabbled back in uh, with it around when my 20s, when I started yoga, um, I was having a lot of panic attacks, anxiety, a lot of mental health stuff going on. I came back to it. I didn't stick then. I, and it wasn't actually until my husband, Jared, um, found his practice, which is also TM, but he's, he's way deeper into meditation than I am at this point. Mm. Um, that once I had my partner, he really found his, uh, interest in it. I then, it was easier for me to commit to, mm-hmm. um, because I had a, a, somebody else who was also interested in the same thing. Um, and he learned and then it just became, I can't remember the last time I didn't meditate at this point. Um, so I meditate every morning for 20 minutes. I do write in this journal called, and I highly recommend this to everybody. You can buy it off Amazon. It's called the five minute journal. Yeah. It it's so good. Do you have it? No, but I've, I've heard of this so many times. Oh, I, I it's probably so great. Need to get it. Yes. It's so great because it's, it literally is within seconds, but it helps you align what you're grateful for, what would make your day great. It, it, you write down your daily affirmations and then at night you come back and you write down the three amazing things that happened and then how you could have made today better. And sometimes I write nothing. I'm like, no, my day was great. Um, And so I do that and then I meditate. Um, I haven't done yoga as much since I was in a boating accident Um, last year. My body, especially my foot, doesn't move the same way and it can be really challenging and which actually takes me out of the moment. Mm. Um, But I I really try to – and and besides the spiritual practices – I also try to do things like self-care more than I've ever done in the past. So whether that's a bath and watching a funny rom-com, whether that's baking banana bread. um, I spend a lot Mm -hmm. of time with Pax and walking him. I love walking. So kind of things like that, just more like self-care and then blending that in with my spiritual practices. Thank you for the beautiful reminders. Um, definitely going to be getting the five minute journal. And, you know, I, that's one thing too, that has always um, really fascinated me is TM. And it's something mm-hmm. that I will absolutely learn someday because I know you have to go to a class f- to do it. Mm-hmm. It's not like the yep. normal meditation, but I've seen how it has affected your life when you're doing it and when you're not. And I think it's, it's really beautiful that you and your husband can do it. Oh, yeah. And honestly, um, to see, you know, when you're too close to yourself, you can't always see its impact. I know, I know that when I don't meditate, I'm definitely a little wonky. But watching Jared and watching his experience with meditation over the past, I guess he's meditated for three, some four years now at this point, Mm -hmm. his, he has like, just blossomed and has given him Mm -hmm. so much just availability to tap into his consciousness and to create and to be more comfortable, to confront things, um, to visualize things. And it's really amazing to watch other people go through um, transformation when you can't always see it in yourself. Yes. Hence the reason we like to coach others in that, right? (laughs) Isn't that so true? So true. And and speaking of you know, business and and all of that, which of course this episode is about, I'm wondering what you do to stay excited and really engaged in your business because it has morphed like so many of our businesses have. So are there any specific things you do to stay engaged with it? Yeah, that's a great question. And actually I just went through one of these dips um, in the end of September I was really struggling with just my mindset and where my business was. And what I realized was, is that my business is always great when my mindset is always screwed on right. Mm -hmm. My business is in the crapper when my mindset is in the crapper. So I decided that beyond the technical, the tactical, the strategic, all of the things that go into scaling a business, the most important thing, no matter what, no buts about it, is your mindset. Mm. And if your mindset is not in the right place, your 